Suicide Squad, the movie that I was anticipating more than any other movie this summer. And this is what I thought about it. I thought it was... I'm going to tell you literally everything you need to know about the plot. You take a ragtag, beat them up group of bad guys, and you have them do your dirty work for the government, and they tag out evil bad guys. That's it. Now, how can you make a movie so long based off that one sentence? Now, I'm going to spend probably most of the time talking about the characters and then revisit what I thought about the plot. Right off the bat, this is the first time that Harley Quinn is the live action, so it was pretty interesting to see her character play out. The character has never been done before, so right now I have to say yes, this is the best Harley Quinn we are going to get thus far. I'm going to say this about a million times, I think there was just too much going on visually with all the characters, and for her as well. I understand her Jester costume really doesn't translate well to movies. I know that there was an Easter egg scene with her in the Jester costume, but it wouldn't ride out through the entire movie. So give her a different outfit. I was all for it. But certain things were a little too much. Like, I don't know what was going on on her ear. There were like 10, 15 gold uh, safety pins or earrings or something. That's too much. Basically, all I wanted to see was some crazy over-the-top criminals, not Hot Topic fashionistas. Because that's basically what they are. Rick Flagg's character is very one-dimensional. What you see is what you get, and that's really about it, other than his love interest with Enchantress. That's it. It's very flat. Now, with Killer Croc, I understand that they wanted to go with practical effects instead of a full CGI character, and for that, I commend them. It does make me wish I could see what it would be like if they had King Shark in it, though, but I understand why they went that way, and hopefully they revisit King Shark. Maybe he'll be, like, in Suicide Squad 2. Please. Mm -hmm. Katana was a very interesting character, and I wanted to see more of her, but the only real chance that we got to see her character was when she had her sword out and she was crying to it because the soul of her dead husband was in that sword. That's the only real in-depth look into this character that we got. Other than that, it was just a character that was slashing away. That's it. But that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy the character. I I just didn't get enough of this character. And Captain Boomerang was played by none other than our favorite, Dry Courtney. You know, that guy that they keep pushing on us? Really don't know why they're really pushing this guy into Hollywood. Just stop. However, in this movie, I really feel like this is his breakout role. This was the role he was made for, but we didn't get anything. He was one step away from being Slipknot. Just another throwaway character. It doesn't mean that they're bad characters, it just means the fact that they were too busy either hacking and slashing or having a flashback. <sighs> and I really want to know what was up with that unicorn. Please, someone tell me. I need to know that. Like, if it's just there for some random purpose, okay. Is it an Easter egg, though? Should I know what's going on with that unicorn? As much as I don't like him in any other role that he's ever been in, it was actually worth having him in Suicide Squad. It was really interesting. I was surprised and was really left hanging on wanting to see more of him and more of his boomerangs, because I saw, like, two scenes of him using his boomerang, and then he was kind of holding them and wielding them around. Captain Boomerang, Katana, and Killer Croc, to me, I really felt like they were one step away from being Slipknot. They were basically almost throwaway characters. That doesn't really say much because that means that they really didn't focus on their characters. I really wanted to hear more about who they were. I really wanted to see more about them and less about certain other characters. I didn't feel like Slipknot's character was a complete waste. It was worth having him in the movie because everyone needed to know what the consequences were if they didn't follow the mission. I did enjoy Diablo's character, who's pretty set in his ways of being a humble man who will do no wrong anymore and has to overcome his personal issues. And then right before he killed Incubus, he turned into like this Aztec skeleton looking warrior on flames. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Did not expect that. And I'm really happy that they kept that out of the trailer. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for. The Joker. If you were to take the Chris Nolan Joker, he would be more of the serious type. But this is the more comic booky type. And you can't even get angry that everyone was over the top because that is what a comic book is. It's ridiculous. I understand that Jared Leto was very disappointed that the Joker wasn't really in the movie as much as he wanted the Joker to be, but it's not a Joker movie and it's not a Batman movie. This is a Suicide Squad movie. You are simply a subplot of Harley Quinn. That is it. That's what you are. I think he just needs to come to terms with that. Jared Leto's Joker reveal was very early on in the process, which I think was a very smart idea. 
This is, it was completely bizarre and strange looking. It's something that we're not used to with the tattoos and all well, the growth. And getting us used to this kind of look, it prepared us for what he would look like when he goes on the screen. And ironically, I wasn't bothered by how he looks with the tattoos. I was more bothered by all the gold chains and the ridiculous nonsense. I also didn't get an insane psychotic vibe from the Joker. I know that his main function in this movie was very different from his usual function, which is to push Batman over the edge. So in this movie, he was more of a guardian, pervert, pedo bear kind of guy to Harley Quinn. To me, the Suicide Squad was a group of not bad people. To me, they were nice people. I know that they did some bad stuff to get to the place that they are now, so they are criminals, but this, mo this movie, <laughs> this movie portrayed them in a way that we're supposed to feel for them. So we're supposed to think, wow, these people are people. They have human element to them. But I don't think that's necessary when we have a movie about criminals. They are criminals. Give one of them that kind of role. And we will have emotions towards some of them. For example, when they were in the bar and Diablo was telling them why he doesn't use his powers because he killed his family, all of them were kind of like, that's terrible. Why would you do that? And they were all like disappointed in him or something. I don't, I don't know why, you're, you're bad. Everyone should have just looked at him and went like, you don't have to make any of these characters emotionally driven. Just one was enough. Keep it at Diablo. How am I supposed to buy that Harley Quinn is a psycho, but yet she shows some sort of sympathy towards killing women and children? Not condoning any of this, I'm just saying. Sell me the movie I want. Make it believable. Ironically, the only villain that I saw in this entire movie full of villains was Amanda Waller. Yes. I can't see anyone else betraying this character. She killed it, literally. And you wanted Oprah Winfrey to do this character? I don't think so. She wouldn't go for it. You get a bullet in the head. You get a bullet in the head. You get a bullet in the head. Everyone gets a bullet in the head. <laughs> I mean, that would be pretty funny to see. I just don't think Oprah Winfrey would want to do that movie. I mean, come on. She literally killed five of her own men. She's crazy. She's great, great. And you can see that this middle-aged woman strikes fear into the eyes of these criminals. Especially when she holds up her phone. They're totally freaked out. Well, I mean, I would be freaked out if a phone almost made my head explode. And if you're wondering what that was, that is the Enchantress. Yes, I couldn't believe it when I saw it in the theater. That is something she does to, like, make the portal bigger. I did it, and I just looked like an idiot. And that's just the characters. I barely mentioned anything of the plot. I literally just mentioned one sentence of the plot. Now, how can you make a movie that's just a group of people having to fulfill the duties of the government, and then it's like two hours? How can you do that? I mean, how are you supposed to have a solid story when you're bloated with flashbacks, subplots, and character introductions? It's too much, especially when you have so many characters involved. It's crazy. The movie wasn't fluid at all. It was bloated by several choppy character backstory scenes, followed by flashbacks, followed by a series of events, followed by the finale. Finn. Like, that's it. I can understand why you would have such a hard time with the story because you're introducing so many characters in so little time and then having the flashbacks, it's a lot. This movie was written in six weeks and then shoved into production and unfortunately it really shows. I have to say, I view 3D movies as a gimmick and just tax on a few more dollars so I can pay more for your movie, I get it. But this movie served its purpose with 3D. If you haven't seen it and you do enjoy 3D movies, I would definitely see it in 3D because the extra few dollars you spend on 3D, you're actually getting your money's worth in this movie. I'm pretty sure over time Suicide Squad will be one of those guilty pleasures that I eventually will add on to my collection, but right now Suicide Squad is a movie where you can turn your brain off and enjoy. If you were dying to see this movie because you're a hardcore fan or someone who has no idea what this movie was about but you saw it anyway, if you are looking for a Suicide Squad movie that you could really get your hands on that you really enjoy and I would say add to the collection, it would be Assault on Arkham. This movie will deliver everything that you didn't get in the Suicide Squad movie. So yeah, this one. Watch that instead. You know, it's a cartoon. Get over it. What was your impression about the Joker? What did you think about Suicide Squad the movie? Did you see it? Leave the nitty gritty in the comment section below. And if you like this video, click right here to like. And if you want to show your support, definitely subscribe. And for all your current movie news and reviews and every bit of nerdy information, keep it right here at NerdBits. Yo!